Hi, my name is Dominic and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create the very famous Van Halen jump synthesizer sound. And the sound that we're going to go and create will sound like this. Well, doesn't that sound fabulous? Um, well, there's one more thing that I want to tell you in this tutorial. We're going to look at the sound design um, using Massive and some effects, but I'm not going to teach you how to compose the MIDI file. If you want to find out what notes are being used and what chords are being used, then go check that out using YouTube. There are some great tutorials out there. In this tutorial, I'm going to create the sound from scratch. Nonetheless, uh, let me show you what I've done in the final product. Here we have Massive and um, there is a sawtooth oscillator, which I later duplicated in the voice section. Plus there is a low pass filter and some more effects, tape, um, tube, then here we have Magneto from Cubase, which is a tape saturation thing, a reverb and a distortion amplifier um, unit. But we're going to see that at the end, okay? Let's start with an instruments track. Sorry, this is all in German here in Cubase, so um, I'm, I'm going to tell you what that is. I will label this instance of Massive as Jump. Here we go, cool. And let's open Massive. And of course, we're gonna take the initial patch. So click new, here we go. And then we have to take some MIDIs we're gonna work with. Um, so let's take the one from the first track, which sounds like this at the moment. Okay. Not surprisingly, that's pretty raw. It's the typical sound of a sawtooth uh, wave with nothing else done, okay? But we're gonna shape that further. Um, the first thing I want to do then is to make sure that oscillator one is rooted to filter one and then let me see, everything's off. Cool, then let's go to the voicing section. Um, we're gonna duplicate that. Um, of course, there's an another way of doing it. You could um, create another oscillator and detune that using oscillator two, but I prefer using the voicing section and the unisono function um, in Massive. So let's do that. Two voices, two voices, that's enough. And they gotta be detuned. There's one important thing that I usually see um, in YouTube when people use Massive. They just work with that fader and turn it to the left or to the right. But don't forget you can even manipulate the numbers, which makes it a lot easier to define certain numbers of detuning. In our case, we want to have um, 0 0.13 <laughs> um, semitones, semitones, which is 13 cents. And we're gonna bring that number down, 13 cents. And if we now bring it all the way to the right, we can be sure the detuning is exactly 13 cents. I think that's a clever way of um, doing it. So let's turn it on. 
and it already sounds much closer to the jump sound. And let's make the sound a little wider using this pan position thing. And now let's go to the amp envelope, which is envelope number four in Massive. This one is very interesting, um, or I have to say the attack is very interesting because this is the knob which really defines the sound, the, um, the iconic sound of the synthesizer. I'm gonna play a little bit here. Yeah, cool. I mean, I think we're getting closer, right? Um, attack is about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, something. Decay, 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. Sustain, 4 o'clock. And the release is about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, something. Okay. That would be that. Okay. Um... I love to describe these settings using um, um, the clock and not percentage or whatever, okay? Okay, so that's been that. Let me see. The next thing is the filter, I guess. Gotta check that on my sheet. Yes, the sound is really static at the moment and the frequency spectrum is not the way we want it. So let's create an LP4 low pass filter. So we have to set the filters as parallel. Turn all the turn those knobs all the way up right there. Okay. And then bring in the cutoff very very slowly. Here we go, one o'clock, and let's see for the resonance. Okay, I would say eight o'clock or something around there. Cool. So, and I want to define um, envelope one as our filter control. So that will modulate um, the cutoff of filter one how that snaps, how it opens up, okay? So we wanna drag and drop and turn it up. Sounds like that at the moment. And of course we have to play around with the knobs a little bit. So again, the attack is very important to um, make the iconic uh, jump sound. So again, Let's play with those knobs. Yeah, um, around 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and you got the feeling that the filter snaps. The attack is not very short, but it is short enough to give you that kind of snappy feeling. The filter opens up in a snappy way. Okay, that's been the settings. Uh, attack, 10 o'clock, decay, 2 o'clock, sustain, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and release, 8 o'clock. So noise can turn that thing off. All right, next thing is the effects section. I'd like to start with a feedback. This is um, an effect that I love to use making um, 
sounds warmer. So it's just some kind of saturation, okay? Let me show you. Now, as you might have noticed, if I bring this up too much, it sounds like shit, sorry, <laughs> but you have to bring it up in a subtle, very subtle and decent uh, way, okay? So it's, it's very, very subtle. You don't want to have it jump it right into your face, okay? That's the point. Uh, you got to remember that for the next effects that we're going to use. So the next thing is going to be the classic tube. Turn on the mix and bring the drive up to about one o'clock. And now let's bring up the mix slowly. So again, if I overdo this, it sounds like crap, okay? So be very, very careful. I, I've i got it at around eight o'clock or so. I don't know, just very tiny uh, steps, okay? We gotta need a reverb for our sound because it's very, very dry right now, which is not surprising. I am gonna use the built-in reverb of Massive for that. You could use any reverb you like, of course, but um, for the sake of simplicity, I decided to use the reverb of Massive. I think we're getting there. Um, we got a very bright reverb. This is uh, according to the color knob which I brought to the right. Um, well a bright reverb is a typical thing you would find in 80s music and so you'll find it in Jump as well and this is why I decided to make this reverb a bright reverb. There's one more thing that I forgot that I would like to do. I'd like to make this sound a little bit more moving or lively and therefore I gonna modulate the pitch of oscillator 1 using the sine wave so I have to bring up that fader so only the sine wave is active and I gonna control the rate bring it to what was that one o'clock Okay, um, this is another subtle effect. You don't really hear the uh, frequency modula modulation. Uh, it's just very, very subtle, okay? So we're done with that. This is all you need, all you need to do in Massive. Anything that comes now uh, is dependent on what you got in your studio. So I have Cubase, which comes with several plugins. Um, for example, Magneto, um, a built-in plugin of Cubase, tape saturation, and then I got an RC48, an external reverb. So let's turn out the massive reverb and turn on the RC48 reverb. I go for about 27% in the mix, and it sounds like that. Yes, uh, there's one more tiny little thing that I'd like to add. Um, some uh, background information. Um, do you know parallel compression? If you do, then uh, I just sum it up in a very short way, okay? Um, you have a original track, an original track, and you duplicate it, and on the duplicate track you 
put on a ton of compression and then you mix um, both tracks to create a good balance. And using that technique you can um, make fat drums or even make louder mixes. But this technique of parallel compression is not limited to compression. So you could use it also to um, slightly bring in distortion effects. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. Okay, mm, so I'm gonna do this using a send effect. Um, you can do this by going to new track, create a new track and then effects track. And then you can create an insert effect in your um, effects track and I decided to take guitar rig 5 and there is a preset named jump. Isn't that interesting? Okay, cool. And then we want to bring in that effect with a send effect fader. That's what we're gonna do right now. Okay. So this is our final result, um, just exactly the file that I played at the beginning of the video. Um, yes, uh, let's sum it up. I used Massive as my virtual instrument and added some external um, inserts with Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then give me a thumbs up or you could even consider, consider giving me a subscription. Love to see you in the future. Bye bye.